I have written this letter with the intention that it be read aloud. Please forgive the limits of my voice, of my lungs, of this gluttonous muscle that struggles as ever to wrap its way around a phrase, please. If you cannot understand my words, then take the sound and know that when asked any question deemed important, my bones will always answer with your name. <coughs> I have taken you sublingually, you dissolved your way into my bloodstream, then remained. And I spend evenings staring at my bedroom ceiling, arguing with my inner narrator that if he must insist on keeping me from sleep again, I'd rather the conversation be about you. You know, switch it up from my usual statistically induced panic attack. And this rant is my best impression of Molly Bloom, which is to say that right now I'm a little bit of a complete mess and I knew the line would make you laugh. It's funny, since the first time that we were together, you were so nervous, I was afraid that you might shatter, might shake your veins until they hiss steam from your joints like some crazed radiator dissolved into dust, into some sort of powder form moonlight might lean in to kiss me and then spontaneously combust. Not in the double entendre sense of the phrase, in the literal sense, which would have been an awkward thing to have to explain to the firemen standing in my apartment, let alone my roommates. And besides, I would have missed you a lot. And there are hundreds of things that I should be doing right now besides writing this letter for you. In fact, there are hundreds of things that are more important in this world than loving you. And there are hundreds of things that I am infinitely better at than writing in general, like spilling my coffee every time, or bumping my hips into table corners, or somehow miraculously eating an entire hamburger without smudging my lipstick. But Loving you is something that I am like sort of okay at. I mean, not great, but certainly better than I am at writing poems or like subtlety, but definitely not nearly as good as I am at not drinking my own coffee. And can I just say that if anybody is going to smudge my lipsticks th these days, I would really like it to be you. Wherever it is that you and I end up before we wind up dead, I hope that we find time again to have a 20 minute layover in the Antwerp railway station. And did you know that your watch band is always too loose? Cause I've noticed that all I have to do is ask the time of you and you would rather jerk your elbow violently until the face swings around your wrist to be red than ever let go of my hand. It seems important in this moment to record these things, our story, and I'm not entirely sure why, and I certainly haven't come anywhere close to doing it justice. The best thing I can come up with is, do you remember the day in New York City, in the rain? We were standing just underneath the overpass from the train, and the drops kept settling on your glasses and you just kept looking past at me. Ooh.